Oh, how you doing, man? It's uh, November 13th. It's a Wednesday. It's still hot here in Texas. Maybe it's cool where you are, but still like upper 80s, 90 degrees here. But uh, I'm going to review a movie I, I just watched, and this is for, uh, I guess, kind of, I wanted to talk to my friend TZ, but this is for you too, you know. It's not a... I don't know the word for it, but like not elitist, but uh, you know you're in on it too. So, but but TZ, I just watched uh, the Thrill Killers from 1964, direct, directed by Ray Dennis Stecker. I couldn't remember his goddamn name. So I've had this set. I watched uh, I watched the Incredibly Strange Creatures. Who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. I watched um, Ratfink Abubu. Bloodshack, of course. I like Bloodshack a lot. And I watched a Hollywood Strangler meets the Skid Row Slasher. And then he did a lot of porn. For some reason. But uh, I reviewed... Incredibly Strange Creatures, and I liked it. It's definitely not great. It's not terrible. But it seems like he has this reputation, just like Ed Wood, or, um, and I don't know who else. Ed Wood, just is like, you know, a bad director, but I just watched The Thrill Killers, and it was pretty good. I mean, Blood Shack is really bad, but it's so weird. It's kind of hypnotizing. And I thought Thrill Killers was just going to be like, I don't know, just boring. And maybe, maybe good for a laugh or two, which it actually is. But just kind of lifeless maybe and just dumb, but I, I, I really enjoyed it. It's a, it actually reminded me of a, in its structure, like a Richard Lehman book. It was like three separate stories that all converge at, at the end. And I like, I was like, where is this going? Because it starts out, it's this guy's like meandering down a, like in LA, he's on the Hollywood and Vine. And he's looking at the, at the stars, the Walk of Fame. And it's, there's narration talking about how he lives in a non-reality. But you find out he's an actor. Who's like trying to make it. He's not really, you know, he's not he's not famous at all. But he, he's paying the bills with his acting. But he wants more. And, uh... Oh yeah, his wife is played by Liz Renee. Who, I, I, I guess I've seen her photos of her young. But I just forgot that this is the same person that's in Desperate Living. And she was pretty, but she just had a rough life, I guess. Because by the time she came out in Desperate Living, she looked pretty haggard. But she she looks good in this. And, like, she's kind of fed up with him. Oh, yeah, and then there's a Cash Flag. Who's, rent, who's Ray Dennis Steckler. He plays Mad Dog. Who's just a vicious killer. He just goes... I was reading a review. He just said... He just kills, doesn't even have a reason... And you see see that early on. He just sh shoots a guy. Like, he's hitchhiking. He shoots a guy. Takes his car. And then he just... He gives the girl 50 bucks. Like, to take her back to his apartment. He slaps the hell out of her. <laughs> around. And then kills her. And that scene was good, too. Because there, there's like a... You know, there's like a flashing light. It's in black and white, too. So there's like a flashing light out of a window. Just like that. And so the room will go dark and then light and like he's stabbing her and then it turns light dark. So I was like, he, there is like some effort, or more, a lot of effort put into this. And some shots, it could have been like, I was like, this is like Scorsese. <laughs> or it just reminded, it just, it's a good movie. Like, it's, it's well made, some good shots. <coughs> um, and then, so you got Mad Dog and then. There's Renee and her husband, husband, John, his last name's Saxon, it's not 
Yeah. Uh, John? It's not John Saxon. But his last name's Saxon. His wife's Liz Renee. She kind of gets mad at him and takes off to go see her sister who has like a diner in the middle of nowhere in Topanga Canyon. And she's she's talking about, you know, uh, how she's fed up with him. And then you hear like, well, before she goes to there, when she's talking to her husband, there's like a report that three lunatics escaped from an insane asylum. And I just didn't even think anything about that. I guess I thought, you know, that's what it was going to be about, but um, I forgot, I forgot. So, but then it, it goes, then, like, it introduces a, a guy and his girlfriend. The girl is Caroline Brandt. She's in, like, all of Steckler's movies. He, he married her. She looks really young in this. Or young, like, she's in Blood Shack, and she's a lot, looks a, a lot younger. And her and her boyfriend, or, or I don't know, maybe it was her husband, they, they buy a house. And, okay, and then I was like, oh, now who are these people? Like, we got, we got Mad Dog, we got Saxon, and, and Liz Renee, um, and then the three lunatics. And then now, like, this couple. And so they're going around the house, and they go up, and, like, his friend is supposed to be there. And then they go up, like, into the attic or something, and as soon as they go up, they see, like, a severed head, and then the three lunatics are there. And then they attack the couple. They just kind of like subdue them. And then one, but then uh, the the boyfriend starts fighting back. And one of the lunatics, uh, Gary. I don't think it's his name. We'll call him Gary. He doesn't like closed doors, so he freaks out, grabs an axe, and he kills the boyfriend. He chops his head off. It's not. It's not bloody or gory, but. He, like, you kind of see it, and you see the head, like, roll away. I was surprised they showed that. Then the girl runs, or Caroline Brandt runs away, and they're chasing her. And I was like, is this going to be the whole movie, just the chasing? Because it lasts a while. They're chasing her, you know, through the hills and the tall grass and stuff. And finally, like, they, she goes back to the house, and they kill her. Again, you don't see that, but it was pretty like, horrible still, they corner her in a room. One of the maniacs just sits down and is like listening. To, oh yeah, there's a, they're playing like a radio program of Little Red Riding Hood, which fit with like them. It was pretty. That was good. And that was a good scene. And then they don't show them killing her, but you know it happens. As well. and then it sucks. So, but then I was still okay. I guess there's something. They're all gonna meet up. So the maniacs go to the the diner where. Liz Renee, her sister, and now her husband has shown up with like a movie producer. And the lunatics come in. Well, he's carrying the axe. One of them took the axe from the, from Gary, who, who did the chopping. And he's carrying it, and he's like cleaning it. And I was like, I'm not worried that this dude has an axe. So then one of the crazies is actually Mad Dog's brother, and he wants to like dump these guys. So he calls Mad Dog, and he's he's like, I got I got bread, you know, and then Mad Dog's like, well, you gotta pay me, you gotta, he's like, I don't do nothing for nothing, and he's like, yeah, I got money, just come and help me get rid of these guys. So I was like, that's cool. He hates these two other lunatics, and the the three lunatics, they're all they're all very distinct from each other. They're again, they're not great actors, but they they did good. They, Making themselves seem just over the top and dumb, but they're memorable, kind of funny. And then, um, you know, one of the, the Liz Renee's sister, one of the uh, Mad Dog's brother, he wants coffee and she puts rat poison in it. And then he, he's like, um, he's like torturing, not torturing, but he's tormenting uh, Liz Renee's husband, Saxon. Because like, they see his pictures on the wall that Liz Renee's sister had put up. And he's in good shape. And they're like, they want him to like flex his muscles. But then uh, Mad Dog's brother drinks the coffee and it like, immediately dies. Falls down dead. And then they all start fighting. And then uh, I'll stop there because I'm pretty much told the whole movie. 
it's big chase, more fighting, a lot of action, which isn't great, but it was interesting. As I was watching it, I was like, I like this better than, I mean, I, I hate, well, I don't hate, but I do not like Rob Zombie movies. I thought, actually, I think Three from Hell is my favorite. But I've only seen it once, but I didn't think it was that bad, but I cannot. I don't, I do not get how people watch Devil's Rejects or House of a Thousand Corpses or the Halloween movies and, and think they're in any way, shape, or form a good horror movie. I mean, if you think, if you like them because they're so bad, I understand that. And I thought Lord of the Salem was okay just because it's so crazy. But anyway, like, yeah, like, I enjoyed this way more than his movies or probably even, like, the Conjuring movies or the Saw movies. And I just thought it was going to be just, a, I was like, I'll watch it. I'll, I'll just get it out of the way, but... And I was like, man, I like uh, Blood Shack, Incredibly Strange Creatures, which I've only seen once, but I would watch again. Uh, Thrill Kit, now Thrill Killers, I would watch this again. And uh, there was even some parts where I rewound them to see again, because they're funny. It's part of the action, like shooting. And I was like, man, uh... Ray Dennis Decker, he, he's got some moves. Like, he's leaping and jumping and shooting. <laughs> and, and, like, fast. I was, this is, like, Hong Kong style. <laughs> so, yeah, TZ, I really like Thrill Killers. Uh, yeah, he shot the black dude three times. Maybe that was a little excessive. Um, and the I talked about this, I think, on... Some other video where like, this Blu-ray has tons of special features and it has like a whole nother movie on the Thrill Killers disc that will like it just says Thrill Killers and I just never like all the special features it has alternate cut the Maniacs are loose, 77 minutes. Uh, I don't know if it's, an, it's, an, it's a different version of the Thrill Killers, but it's in color. And I, I might watch that right now. So I'm going to, you know, wade into this Thrill Killers disc. And now I could talk to you, TZ. We can talk about, or we can email and write letters about thrill killers <coughs> yeah I'd give it a man it's only 70 minutes it's only an hour and 10 minutes still kind of dragged a little though but uh I'll give it a, th a solid I wanted to give it a three and a half of those I know it's not that good but I did like it I did enjoy it uh, I I'll watch it again and I don't know if I'll like delve into more of the, these immediately there there's another movie I want to watch and review and I guess I need to show you I got some more movies lately got a lot actually I went a little crazy over last weekend I found some VHS and stuff so yeah I guess I'll, I'll show you what I got next video but if I'm, I'm not saying like you have to seek out the thrill killers and get this set but if it ever comes across your way maybe it's on, i don't know if it's on youtube or not uh i would check it out so i'm glad i watched it tz i'll email you right now <laughs>